The best way to learn a language is clearly reading. Speaking, speaking, speak. Nah, man, rock out. It's all about listening and music. What? Speak, speak, keep, speak, 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 speak. Uh, writing? No. no. Speak until your mouth hurts. Oh, I know. You're going to say it's pronunciation, aren't you? Pronunciation and ear training, huh? Yeah, I know. I know. It's not. <sighs> What's the best way to learn a language? Well, first, you have to understand that there are two main paths. Hi, I'm Josh, your American English guide. And in today's video, this is a very big, important video because this is the first big building block that we are going to be talking about. And it is the idea that there are two main paths in language learning. They're not the only paths, and you can mix and match things, but there are generally two big pathways that you can follow. Now, a lot of people might be watching this video, if you haven't left already, <laughs> and are thinking that, oh, input is definitely the best way, right? Input is listening, reading, and there are other people who very strongly believe, no, you have to start speaking right away because otherwise you'll never start speaking. You got to do that. Just, just do it. And there are probably a lot more people in the first group, the input group, than the second group. But I'm here to tell you that neither one of these is best. Now, input is always there. That's always the base in some way, but that doesn't mean you can't start speaking straight from day one. So let's get into some details here. First, what is an input-based path? Well, as I said, input is listening, reading, and just lots of exposure. This would include the ear training part of pronunciation. Steve Kaufman is probably the most prominent or biggest example of this type of approach in the online language learning community. He's always talking about listen a lot, listen a lot, listen a lot, read a lot, read a lot, read a lot. That's what he does when he starts a new language. In fact, he created an entire website called link.com, which is based around this main core idea. You can find a link to that in the description below. You can also check out his YouTube channel, either somewhere around here or in the description. Now, what about output, an output path? Well, many people claim that input is the best way to learn a language because of a lot of research that has been done that shows that to be true. But that doesn't mean it's the only way. I think we still have a lot of research to do, but let's not worry about that right now. An output-based approach focuses on speaking and possibly writing. We're not going to worry too much about writing. We're going to focus a lot more on speaking. And if you've seen the introduction to my pronunciation course, you will probably understand why with the tree diagram that you see here. Benny Lewis, who I mentioned in the previous video, is probably the most famous example of this, and he often talks about speaking from day one. Day one, new beginner, start speaking. He even created a website called Fluent in Three Months, which is a topic of a lot of controversy in the online language learning community, and I will be talking specifically about that and whether or not that's possible in the future. The point is here that both Steve Kaufman, the input guy, and Benny Lewis, the output guy, which Benny Lewis does have a lot of input, but he focuses a whole lot on the speaking instead of trying to build a bunch of input first, okay? Both of these people are polyglots. They both speak more than 10 languages. So you can't sit there and tell me input is the best way when Benny Lewis speaks over 10 languages. You can't sit there and tell me output is the best way when Steve Kaufman speaks over 10 languages. And these are just two of the most famous polyglots that you can find online. 
Now there are some people of course who will say that Benny Lewis is just talented this or that, but that doesn't explain why he failed German in high school and why he actually really had difficulty learning Spanish in Spain until he started taking a much more active speaking approach that worked for him. And that's the key. You have to find what works best for you. That is true for pretty much any skill, but especially language learning, which is actually, as I've said before, it's actually five skills and two knowledge areas. So there are a lot of pieces here and there are different ways to put them together. There are different ways to emphasize one or the other. But if they both work, how do you know which one you should do? Well, you can experiment. And as I said, there's ways to combine and mix these, which we'll talk about soon in future videos in this course. But you need to also understand one more important thing. Input and output seem like they're opposites, right? They're actually not because look at Steve Kaufman. If he starts reading and listening a lot, he learns lots of words and he sort of absorbs the grammar and he's able to understand the language really well, eventually he does start to speak and he knows that he has to practice speaking a lot. He prefers to build up that good base where he can actually understand people and then focus on him speaking and communicating without needing to worry about understanding the other person. That's what he prefers. That's what works really well for him. Benny Lewis, on the other hand, for various reasons, what works best for him is just starting to speak and make as many mistakes as possible. Don't be afraid, go out. He wants to communicate with people. He wants to be able to go to a country and start communicating with people, learn the culture, make friends. That's his main goal, the reason why he wants to learn that language. And of course, Steve, you know, he likes to go other places, he likes culture, he likes to make friends and all this stuff. But this is Benny's primary goal, from what I understand. And so that's what he focuses on is just jumping right in and not worrying about being perfect or anything like that. And he just speaks, he tries to communicate. So if that sounds like you, and you're the type of person where you really wanna to go to an English speaking country, or if you're learning another language, some other country, and you just want to communicate with people. You don't have to spend a super long time learning words and learning grammar and all this stuff. You can learn as you go, as you practice. Okay, it's a completely different approach. But again, they're not opposites because Steve focuses on input, later he focuses on output. Benny focuses a lot on the output and then as he gets better, in order to really get up to those higher levels, the, the advanced levels, that's when he really has to start expanding his vocabulary a lot more, listening a lot more, reading a lot more. And he's talked about on his blog where when I think it was the French C1 or C2 test, where he had to spend a lot of extra time working on his listening and um, I think reading because he didn't quite spend as much time on that. He was more focused on, on the speaking part where Steve could probably handle the listening part easily, but he might struggle with the speaking part at the same stage. These aren't opposites because if you start with one, you're going to have to focus more on the other one later. It just depends on which one are you more comfortable with or more interested in starting with first. The output path is very high stress, especially if you take Benny's style of approach where he's trying to make a lot of progress in a short amount of time. It's very high stress, but it's faster. Okay, if we're talking about the fastest way to learn a language, output. Hands down, easy, done. Output is the fastest way to learn a language, period. However, the input path, this is actually where in a way it is the opposite. If you start with an input path, there's less stress, right? It's kind of easy. You just get to listen a lot. You get to read a lot. You get to just see these words again and again and see this grammar again and again, but it's going to take longer. That's the thing. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to take many, many years, but it's going to take longer. So you have to sit down and you have to think, why am I learning English? Uh, what do I want to do with English? 
right? Is it you want to understand TV shows? You want to actually make friends in English? You want to move to an English speaking country? Is it for work, right? Why? What are you using it for? And then your preferences. Do you like high stress? Do you like setting really ambitious goals? Maybe you can try Benny Lewis's full on approach of speak from day one where he has his three month missions and you just go and try to do it and get as far as you can. That could be very good. If you're more like Steve Kaufman, maybe you're, you don't care about learning that fast. You want to just take things slower and kind of enjoy it. And you know, you're more interested in maybe literature and things like that. Maybe you should just go ahead and start with an input based path. There are many different factors here. And as I said, you can mix them. There's different ways to approach these, but these are the two main pathways that we're going to set up in your mind. And then from that, as we continue in this course, we're going to see some of the other variations and things that you can do. What I want you to do until next time is I want you to kind of sit down and think about that, right? Even if you're intermediate, even if you think you know why you're learning, really sit down and think about it. Think about what you prefer. What do you like? Okay, what do you want to do? Both in English and for learning English. And I recommend that you write it down because you can refer to it later as we go through this course. But my question to you is, what do you guys think about these two paths or this idea that there's the best way to learn a language? What do you think is the best way? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching another English Hacks lesson, and I'll see you guys in the next one.